So like marketing's job is to connect with the customer, get them the information they need, and also triage them to who they need to talk to, which means they need to make sales job as easy as possible. So the concept of lead scoring comes in where we say, if they have visited our services page or our products page five times, we add 10 points to their score. Or if they are from the United States, we add 10 points to their score or whatever works for your criteria. And so that lead score cheat sheet essentially tells you how to figure out what that criteria should be. So when we work with a client on lead scoring, we take all of the like customers that they've had over the past usually year just to get some recent data. And we say, where did they come from? Where are they located? What are their similarities? You're listening to the Rich State of Mind Show, the podcast made to make you the total package in the entrepreneurial world and give you what we call a rich state of mind. If you are here looking to learn about real estate investing, marketing, elevating your business, and developing your mindset to get to the next level, then you are at the right place. Stay tuned and be sure to join our community on richstateofmind.com. Now here's your host, Anthony Ritchie. Hey, Lauren, thank you for joining me on this episode of Rich State of Mind. If you could please just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Yeah. Hey, thanks for having me. My name is Lauren and I'm based in Wilmington, North Carolina. I am the chief marketing nerd of Coastal Consulting. I started a marketing automation consulting firm in March of this year, and we focus on helping companies really grow in their understanding of their customers and their marketing um, efforts. Awesome. And so what got you into that? So I have had a little bit of an interesting career. I'm 27, so I haven't had much of a career, but (laughs) I started my career in logistics and then went into marketing for a logistics firm. And I ran trade shows across the U.S. Um, And part of that was sending out emails and uh, directing people to landing pages to sign up for events and stuff like that before a trade show. And in that process, I found that of all I did for my job of logistics, event management, travel, I really enjoyed the pre-show emails the most of building out how to communicate with people, how to best get people to engage with your communications and looking at the data that we have on people and how to um, speak to them the best way that we can with the information we have. And so I decided to start exploring that more and found the marketing automation revenue operations like niche within the marketing umbrella and found that I could have a full career looking at databases, the data that we have access to and helping people better connect with their customers. And I just dug deeper into that from there. And then at what point, you know, did you make the decision? All right, I want to, I'm going to set my, separate myself from that company and then going into doing your own thing. So I've changed companies a few times and that was kind of what drove me to do this. <laughs> I, um, I've always kind of had, uh, I guess a problem with authority, if you will. Um, and I just have not found myself to be a good employee. And as I've looked around at organizations, I've, I've found that the biggest issue that's kind of consistent across companies if you want to go with America, I'm sure it spans further than that. It's just poor leadership. And so I chose earlier this year just to separate myself and to be my own boss for a bit. And from there, I fell into the niche of HubSpot and Salesforce because I've been working in that for a long time. And for those of you who don't know, HubSpot is a marketing automation platform and CRM that essentially helps companies keep track of who their customers are, who's on their email list who are they talking to and build up their information about them to build a relationship. And Salesforce is a CRM specifically that has a more robust platform that's really good for larger enterprise companies. And so making those two work together is what we specialize in. So enterprise companies can have a really robust system that keeps all of their customer data, but also have really sleek marketing automation and emails and all of that in HubSpot. So I, know that I was really good at that and decided to just freelance. And I, within a month had outgrown my freelance capacity and started hiring. So I now have a team of four and we are hiring three new roles at the moment. Um, and really have enjoyed being out on my own and the market spoke and basically we're in a really valuable niche. So. All right. So I got a couple of questions. So, uh, what for the listeners, what does CRM stand for? 
Mm -hmm. CRM is customer relationship manager management. Okay. And so if I, if I'm listening to how you broke down HubSpot and Salesforce, and then I think of something like MailChimp, what would be mm -hmm. the difference between HubSpot and Salesforce and then uh, something like MailChimp where, you know, you can kind of break down based on who signs up with their email, with a certain tag, who, how to target those individuals. What, what would it make, I'm assuming, and based on how you explain it, Salesforce and HubSpot sound a lot more intricate than that. So MailChimp is a really great option for very small businesses or those who are just getting started building a list. HubSpot and Salesforce become valuable when you have, mm, well, HubSpot becomes valuable at a threshold of around a thousand contacts. They're really good at scaling with businesses from early on to larger. Mm -hmm. Salesforce becomes valuable when you have like 80,000 or more people in your database. So those are for like large organizations. Um, 80,000 would be like a very small amount for Salesforce. It's really up to like the millions in that platform. Um, yes. But HubSpot is really good at starting small and building. So the difference is MailChimp is kind of like the free version of HubSpot. So you can send emails, you can build basic landing pages, manage social a little bit. But if you want to be able to automate um, data management or automate email communications or automate text messages in a way that's like responsive to how people interact on your website. So um, let's say somebody goes and submits a form and you want to respond to that. And if they go back and look at your services page the next day, you want to send them another email or target them with an ad. HubSpot gives you a digital platform to essentially say, these are all the ways that I want to engage with my customer. And then you can look at the insights that HubSpot has and the data that you've collected there and be where your customer is, uh, like right place, right time, basically. Awesome. It, it makes it feel very organic. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. So it's probably even saying, you know, hey, Lauren, I noticed that you did such and such. And then, yeah. uh, okay. <laughs> all right. So you, you've, you've talked about, the, you know, the, the application as far as once you get the, you have these programs, how effective they mm -hmm. are. How can I use them to build my list, though? So, like I said, I started my agency in March of this year. So I chose to use HubSpot because I've been in it for so long and like really know the power it packs. So I host my website, my marketing and my sales efforts within HubSpot. So I started V1 of my coastal consulting website in HubSpot CMS. So think of like WordPress or Squarespace mm -hmm. um, where you may have a simple site. HubSpot enables you to go in and build a site just as easily as that, sometimes easier, um, and be able to scale it with tons of web pages, landing pages, forms, all of that. And so through using a HubSpot site, um, you can get a three, like 360 view of your customer. When they go on your website, you can see what they've done on your site before they convert on a form. You can really build that relationship. Um, they also have like a chatbot feature where you can add that to your website and have automated chat where if they say this, we respond with this. Um, so it can take out those initial like FAQs that you get um, of like, hey, like what times do you have available for this? They have online booking. So they take the free features of um, smaller companies and build them together to be one holistic space. Um, something that HubSpot talks about a lot is being like um, uh, built, not cobbled. So whenever you're a small business, you often take the lowest version of a lot of platforms and like make them work together. So maybe I send my marketing emails through MailChimp and I use my website on WordPress or Squarespace and I keep all of my contacts in a spreadsheet and I have all of these different pieces that I'm like working together to make my tech stack. Yes. Um, maybe I have a Calendly booking link. <laughs> um, but then with a system like HubSpot, you have your meetings booking, your website, your email, your sales automation, your contacts are all in one login and they're all in one space. And so all of the data from all of that is being collected by one system stored in one place. And it makes it really easy for you to connect with your customers and also to keep up with your business. So having that one system makes it so much easier as a small business owner to like get what my customers need from me <laughs> to them quickly and also to see what they're looking for and make the experience better for them. Now, uh, you gave me a great idea and it makes me, because I actually use WordPress. Uh, for uh -huh. my website and so you have me wondering if wordpress has kind of came around and figured this out yet without it slowing down the the page speed because that's the concern right you add in these plugins and these features now your, mm -hmm. your page speed goes from three seconds to now 15 seconds uh -huh. uh, which you'll lose your bounce rate to be 100 if uh mm -hmm. it's that slow nobody will ever see your, your content so i'm curious to check that out because that's always a concern uh by the way, I always I wanted to tell you your your website looks great. By the way, it's very clean, simple. 
uh, and very interactive. So definitely uh, not overwhelming. So yeah, whoever, and we built that uh, yeah. we built that on HubSpot CMS in two days because wow. of how easy it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was actually pretty good, actually. Uh, very direct. So I was like, oh man, this is this is nice looking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no problem. No problem. And so, um, <clears throat> so I saw on your I saw on your website that you had a, a few a free a few resources as far as helping people out uh, with mm -hmm. their. Uh, with you know bringing in leads and maintaining uh, you know the customers, and one of them I saw was uh, creating a custom lead source. Uh, how do you mm -hmm. how do you do that uh, in HubSpot? Yeah, so in HubSpot, there. So, so starting off, a lead source is basically how they met you. So a lot of times that's Google Ads or maybe Facebook or something like that. So it's essentially showing you where are my leads coming from, and then that lets me know, okay, all of my leads are coming from Facebook ads. None of them are coming from Google. I should stop investing in Google and put more money into Facebook ads. So that's the purpose of tracking a lead source. So taking that from there. HubSpot has standard lead sourcing properties. Um, they're called original source, original source drill down one and original source drill down two. And that essentially will say, this contact came from Google ads um, or it says paid search and then Google ads and then the campaign name. So it lets you drill down pretty deep into exactly where that person came from. Um, same for Facebook ads, all of those different ad sets where it's like UTM, all of that. You don't have to track that anymore. It's pulled out in these fields in HubSpot. But for some organizations, that's not granular enough. And when I talk about some, I'm talking about enterprise organizations with like really, really big um, data problems. So <laughs> that's usually who we work with. Um, and uh, they essentially will create custom lead sources of, okay, maybe this is a referral from this specific person or um, this is from our job site. Like there are just like different granularities that they want to go through. Yeah. And so in HubSpot, the way that you populate that custom lead source is use um, something called a workflow, which is essentially HubSpot's automation tool where you say, if this is true, then do this um, at a very high level. So we pull information that we get from HubSpot's native reporting and pull it into one high level list that says, okay, here's all of our European Google ads. This is one field where we can report on that at once. So it makes it easier for your sales team to filter through your leads. If we're looking through, we know that um, AdRoll is our number one lead source for conversion. When we get leads from AdRoll, it's like a 90% chance they're going to work with us. These are super high value. So when they come through there, we want to be notified. So sales can call them right away. Um, using stuff like custom lead source properties and automation can help you get there faster. So that's really the value in doing that. And then the workflow tool on those original source fields in HubSpot help you build that. <clears throat> yeah, so it, something similar to what you were mentioning is we would uh, have to do pixels. Like I would have to uh, get a Facebook pixel and add it to mm -hmm. WordPress in order to determine what was coming from Facebook uh, in order to mm -hmm. properly uh, target people. So it sounds like, yeah, you've def they've definitely, you know, CPI'd uh, the process. Um, Mm -hmm. versus making it to where you have to do so many other things, use so many different other features in order to get one thing that you need. So that's pretty, that's yeah. pretty cool. Um, yeah, for sure. The, uh, the next thing I wanted to know was, what is a lead source cheat sheet? That sounded like pretty dope when I, read, when I was reading that. So there's two different resources I think you're referring to. So one is we have an ebook that actually takes you step-by-step -step with screenshots and videos of how to do the custom lead source property I just talked about. Mm -hmm. That's for free on our website. I think we make you fill out a form for that, but that'll just get you subscribed to our blog. Um, <laughs> the other one is a lead score cheat sheet. <clears throat> so that cheat sheet helps see you prioritize leads. Like what I was just talking about of like, if we know ad role is our number one source, we mm -hmm. want to talk to those people first. Um, a lead score is essentially a formula that you put together that tells your team that. So, so what marketing automation does, it's a little bit different than what traditional marketing, when people think of marketing, they think of like billboards, but that's yes. not really what marketing does anymore. <laughs> it's advertising. So like marketing's job is to connect with the customer, get them the information they need, and also triage them to who they need to talk to, which means they need to make sales job as easy as possible. So the concept of lead scoring comes in where we say, if they visited our services page or our products page five times, we add 10 points to their score. Or if they are from the United States, we add 10 points to their score or whatever works for your criteria. And so that lead score cheat sheet 
essentially tells you how to figure out what that criteria should be. So when we work with a client on lead scoring, we take all of the like customers that they've had over the past usually year just to get some recent data. And we say, where did they come from? Where are they located? What are their similarities? So maybe they all have um, a Gmail account or they all have a paid email. So it's like a work email yeah. um, or their VP level or above. So we look at the commonalities in your best customers and you build a score that essentially triages people who look like your best customers to the top of your salespeople's priority. That is awesome. And I'm gonna have to definitely apply something like that because um, it, it led me to my, what well, my thought process was, well, what's your, what's your conversion rate percentage you look for before you decide to move on to a different demographic? So, some people describe that differently. So for okay. me, I look at my, I look for my best clients via my lead score. So that doesn't always mean my highest paying clients. Sometimes that's the people who I work best with um, culture wise. Sometimes that's the people with the best product fit. Um, and for my clients, sometimes it's the people who re, like renew the most or like for an e-commerce person it, or for e-commerce company, it would be the person who buys most frequently. Um, so there's all these different criteria. So you essentially say, what is my ideal customer? And like, maybe I pick five of them. <laughs> and then from there, I work backwards of where did they come from? What do they look like? What is this fact about them? And you start to see where things are similar. Um, so it really starts with you deciding who do I want to be working with? And then you look at who you are working with that fits that criteria. And then you try to find more of them. And so the score just helps you find them faster. Okay. And so, yeah, I like, I like that part. Because and so that cheat sheet essentially tells you how to do that and then gives you a formula where you just plug in the values. So you essentially say the United States is important to me. And you put in how many people that came in in the past year that were in the U.S. and how many that weren't. And it calculates the score for that. So it like helps you build that criteria. <clears throat> I can imagine. I mean, at some point, you probably have to start paying somebody to start doing that because your list will get huge. Um, well, the automation does it for you. So in HubSpot, you can actually take the properties that, that we help you build there. And there's a field called the HubSpot score. And you essentially say, if this is true, add 10 points. If this is true, take away 10 points. And so you literally just point and click and assign point values. So once you've done that spreadsheet and that worksheet, you can go build your own HubSpot score and it'll automatically update these people as these different criteria are met. Man, you got me want to switch over, Lauren. <laughs> and I just yeah. built my WordPress like six months ago. I switched over from Wix and WordPress <laughs> definitely was was fitting what I wanted to do. But this sounds really mm -hmm. dope. And so, OK, so you have your your, your business where you provide uh, guidance on how to properly use these platforms. So, all right, I come to you, Lauren. Hey, uh, I, I got I got an email list of a thousand people. I'm bringing in about five thousand people a month, page, five thousand page views per month but I want to increase and, you know, provide more sales. Where, how do you start, start off with a, a client in order to kind of get them going? Yeah. So, so the clients that come to us are usually pretty large. So that's, that's something that's interesting. So we're part of the HubSpot solutions partner program, which essentially means that we are vetted by HubSpot. We're recommended to help with your platform. And we are also Salesforce consulting partners, which means the same thing. So our typical clients are like minimum 50 million in revenue, have an international presence and like probably 200,000 or above contacts. So reason I say that is because we don't, um, we wouldn't be getting that message. However, our fellow HubSpot partners that are focused on more startups and small businesses like you and I um, would essentially say, we need to figure out um, what's taking your time. So when you look at a small business, you wanna say, what is taking my time? And like, how much is that time costing me? So HubSpot for me was a larger investment as a small business. And the reason that I chose to make that investment is because I looked at all of the things that HubSpot took away from me and paid them to give me that time back. <clears throat> so if you're spending a ton of time building reporting, having point and click dashboard reports that deliver to you once a week, really important. If blog subscribers are important to you, having different pop-ups on your site that says, hey, subscribe to my blog, that's really important. So what we usually look at at clients of any size is what's taking your time and how can we automate that? And HubSpot is the best answer to that because it almost always is, yes, we can do that with HubSpot. So I look at 
what's taking your time? How can I fix it? And then second thing that I always do with a new client is I build something called a customer journey map. So a customer journey map essentially introduces the concept of revenue operations and revenue operations is a newer like term, but it's always kind of existed where we take your marketing team, your sales team, and your service team, which for a lot of us small business people are the same person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we align them on a revenue journey. So in the traditional business model, marketing was like frou-frou. Oh, they're like drawing pictures and like making things pretty. Um, sales were the people who were driving revenue. They were the only ones responsible for bringing in money. And then service was just dealing with customers once we had them and they didn't really talk together. They were really siloed and they didn't communicate or work together. And revenue operations looks at turning all of those departments into a revenue engine, meaning they're no longer overhead. They're not fluffy. They are directly accountable to your bottom line. So marketing now is your sales team, because if you think about how we buy things now, we don't call someone and ask them what their recommendation is. We know, even if we have to get on the phone with someone to buy something or go to a car dealership, we're like 98% of the way there before we actually talk to a human. That's just what we do. Um, ideally, we never talk to a human <laughs> if you're like me. But uh, anyway, then we then go to sales, whose job is to inform them the last little bits of information they need or answer their questions. So sales is more of a teacher now than ever before, because they already know the information. They're just helping them finish the test. And then they close the deal and they go to service. And so at this point, all of these people have communicated together. If they're in HubSpot, all of the data is in the same system. So they're not, um, they're not like disjointing the experience. So the best way to explain that is you know, when you call for customer support from like one of the big telephone companies or something like that, mm -hmm. and you're like, Hey, my name is X. Here's my social. Here's my date of birth. And they're like, okay, I'll transfer you. Okay. And they're like, okay, what's your name? What's your social? What's your yeah. date of birth? Over and, over and you again. say the same thing. Uh-huh. It's like five people having a CRM and a system that's aligned like that in like a revenue operations methodology where we're all synced and we're all accountable to the same goals prevents that. So with some, when somebody calls a client, like a company that has HubSpot, the salesperson answers and it automatically pulls up their profile on the page in front of them because HubSpot is synced to that number and knows everything about them as soon as they call. So all they have to answer is their verification questions of like, yes, this is who you are. And then there's all the data about all the interactions they've ever had with the company. So it creates a frictionless experience. And so it sounds like HubSpot has kind of like this background dashboard for your sales, your service, mm -hmm. and who is the third person? Marketing. Marketing team to kind of see and for you to see as well so that you're kind of all in unison uh, as far as who you're speaking with and uh, what, you know, you know how, like like you said, when you tell those big companies, you're like, hey, let me look at the notes here, what notes were left mm -hmm. of your last trouble ticket. Uh, and so that, okay, that's pretty cool that that's, that's possible because it, def it definitely helps with a great transition. And the first thing you made me thinking about is obviously uh, consulting, right? The coaching mm -hmm. services and you having to get the marketing for that. You having somebody to close the sale on that situation. And then I never thought about the service portion, but yeah, the service person sounds like the guy, the guy or girl that kind of ties the knot, like finishes off the, uh, the, the client to make sure everything is good to go. Mm -hmm. And services is also directly tied to referrals. And everyone knows word of word of mouth marketing is the most powerful thing. If you look mm -hmm. at all the TikTok influencers, influencers and all of that, people trying to pay people to have word of mouth marketing. Um, service is what decides if you get referred or not. Because once I've purchased the product, I don't really think about sales or marketing anymore. I think about how easy is it to get my problems fixed? Like when I get this new car, how do I know that I have an oil change? Like Volkswagen on my new car has an app that tells me, hey, here's when you go get an oil change, your car mm -hmm. needs one in a hundred miles or whatever. And that's the service team's responsibility to make sure I'm taken care of. And it's the care that you receive after purchase that determines if you're going to be a lifelong customer and a like referral partner for that business. So service is essential in revenue operations. I wish more uh, people in the real estate world got that concept. Uh, we have a lot, like a lot of one hitter quitters where uh, mm -hmm. you provide, you know, the service up front you know, but the follow through is horrible. The follow up is horrible. Uh, and so if you would continuously have good follow up, take care of that client, 
you know, throughout through A to Z is what we I really like to say in the military, uh, then you would have reoccurring people coming back. Would they be consistent customers for life? And financially, it makes sense to me, you know, to do that. But I think the way mm-hmm. you broke it down made it very, uh, made it very simple, made it feel like it's something you could try to chew off when you break it down into three different jobs or three different people. And maybe, or maybe if it's just two, you know, between you and your virtual assistant, uh, you kind of break it down that way. I know some people that they they give their virtual assistants, they pay their virtual assistant for being their assistant, but then they also help pay, pay them commission for the sales of their uh, coaching services. Uh, so I know that's a huge incentive for people to kind of keep churning out, especially if your uh, coaching services are ten thousand dollars a piece. <laughs> for sure. And um, the, a really great thing is like you say, so you're talking about, I, I used to work with smaller companies earlier in my consulting days. And something that people do with their VA is they will have um, activity dashboards in HubSpot. So let's say you give your VA access to HubSpot and they're sending emails and calls on your behalf. You can look at the end of the week and say, okay, this VA made 50 calls this week and they sold two deals. So you can build their conversion rate and you can actually have some actionable things to coach oh, your man. VA on is like, Hey, you have a really low success rate. Like, let's work on that. Or eventually <laughs> you could have two VAs yeah. and compare them and figure out who you should actually be paying because you can actually get some performance data because um, there are a lot of freelancers out there that essentially just like run through the motions and maybe aren't using, like giving you the most like bang for your buck whenever you're a small business owner. Like Upwork has a, a deep trove <laughs> of really great people and really not great people. So it's important as a small business owner to be able to have data on what's happening in your business. Like who is working on what, how are we performing? Like what's happening here? And, and having HubSpot gives us insights into who's actually working, who's driving an impact for the business uh, and who's not. So you actually got me thinking. So how, how is HubSpot able to actually track that? Are they just able to track phone calls and, and emails? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you use Gmail or Outlook, which most of us use one, um, there's a plugin that essentially goes into your email. And so it can log all of your emails and track them. You can also choose as you're sending like, yes, track this one. Yes, log this one. So it can show you if people are opening your sales emails. So if I'm just emailing you one-on-one, like when you sent me the note about this before, I could have responded and logged that to HubSpot and clicked track and seen if you like see when you opened my email back to you. Um, I can also open HubSpot and look at Sally May, who submitted a form yesterday and click call on her HubSpot profile, and it'll call her on my computer via my phone um, and record our call in HubSpot. So I have that recording to use for training later, and it's all logged on her profile. That's awesome. It's actually really like that small business is really running like a big one. And are you Mm -hmm. can you set it to where only you can toggle on and off which emails are being read or uh, tracked or not like? The, your, your VA can't turn that off to, so that you can't lose track of your conversion rate. Your VA can turn that off. However, they wouldn't want to because then they would show as not working. Gotcha. Because HubSpot takes all, like they'll look at the amount of sales emails per rep. Like this is super valuable for sales leaders is when you can see, okay, out of my eight reps, one of them made 60 calls this week and one of them made 10 like being able to have that roll up of call volume and sales activities and like emails and meetings, it can tally all of that up for you. And you can see productivity reporting. I am sales at Coastal Consulting. So I use that reporting for myself to be like, oh, I really suck this month. Um, And it helps me keep myself accountable um, because we're just not at a size where I want to have a dedicated salesperson yet. Um, But that's where it's super valuable. It's also really valuable in account management from a consulting perspective of I have six clients and I haven't talked to two of them in two months. That's when my last email was. So I should go ahead and reach out. Um, that's not me. However, <laughs> it helps you see, yeah. okay, I helps, haven't reached out in two weeks. Yeah, follow up. Yeah, uh-huh. to follow up. Mm-hmm. All right, I, really, I really like this because uh, we, so on this podcast, we talk a lot about uh, entrepreneurship. We talk about the different roles in business. Uh, mm-hmm. But one thing that I've noticed to be having a, a huge uptake and I guess because as social media and the internet continues to grow is marketing online. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes. The billboard, I'm not going to say it's dead, but it's not what it once was. And now everybody's on their phones. They're looking, you know, it's funny how you'll say something, right. And then all of a sudden you start seeing the ad on Facebook. And so yeah. then, it, so they got you, they know that the money is in, is, is on the internet. And I like the fact that 
on this episode, we would been able to talk about how to capture whatever whatever skill you may have, how to put that on online and still figure out a not very complicated way to still keep people uh, dedicated to you if it's obviously the service that they are interested about and there's a way to do it and you're not shooting off blind money and resources on advertisers and marketing uh, when you can have it very direct, you know, very targeted. So this is awesome because I mean, I don't know if you heard, you probably have heard like horror stories of people wasting money on Facebook ads and Instagram ads uh, off in the stratosphere and hoping that people come back uh, and you're able to reel them in. Uh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And speaking to anyone out there who's using uh, social or digital advertising, which pretty much everybody, something that I've really found valuable in HubSpot is I can take my list of contacts that are my current clients and use, like you can connect your ad accounts to HubSpot and actually post Google, Facebook, et cetera, ads through HubSpot. Instead of going to Google ads, Facebook ads or whatever, you can manage it all right there. And I can tell them, these are my clients. I want you to go target people that look like these people. It's called a lookalike audience. And so it optimizes your ads because you're only looking at your high value people. So you can say, if they have a lead score of 50 or above, put them in my targeting campaign for this ad. And so it helps you get better ad ROI because you're looking at the right people. Good, good. Hey, well, this has been, this has been awesome. I, I really appreciate this episode and I can actually can't wait for this one to come up too. Uh, if you could please just tell us what is your rich state of mind? What is your big why? Because this is something you're really good at, obviously, and you kind of have it broken down to a system uh, where you've got big, big clients that really trust and trust in you. So please tell us. My big why is being a people first leader. And that goes with my people internally and externally in the agency world. There's a lot of people that are knowledge hoarders and trying to get the most out of you financially, instead of just giving you what you need and helping you learn. And so our big difference is that I really help my clients learn how to use their systems so they don't need an agency forever. And so my why is continuing to always put people first and build simple solutions and make sure they know how to use them. So I have grown up with a very people first family that takes care of one another and others. And so I created this business so I can be people first for my team and my clients. I don't know if that's your team on your website, but y'all look happy. So it is my team. We <laughs> yeah, don't use yeah. stock photos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all look, y'all look very happy at what y'all do. So I thought that was pretty cool as well. Very uh, welcoming as far as like, hey, I, w- I would want to work with these guys. So or girls, really. Oh, all, all, yeah. All ladies. So we got one guy. <laughs> he's new he's not on the website yet <laughs> uh, gotcha <laughs> but uh, i appreciate your time lauren this has been a great episode uh chunk full of content that i think people can really uh use and i really can't wait for this to come out thank you thank you thank you for sticking with us from the start of the episode Please share our show with friends and family, visit our YouTube channel, and view more of our content on richstateofmind.com. See you next week on the Rich State of Mind show.